Ladies and gentlemen, how is everyone doing out there? My name is Javon. I'm Kevin. And we are when we are we saw that. Uh, without further ado, let's talk movies, Kevin. All right. 2020 this year brought us a horror film by the name of His House. Uh, it was directed by Remy Weeks. I think I'm saying his name correctly. It was his debut feature film. Uh, and in it, it told the story of Bowl, uh, played by Sopi uh, Derisu, and Rial, played by Wunimi. I think it's uh, Wunmi Mosaku. They're a married couple of refugees fleeing from South Sudan in search of a better life in Europe. When they are granted asylum in Britain, they are given a shabby home in the outskirts of London to live in. They soon realize that they may not be alone in that home. Um, this was uh, a Netflix uh, premiere. And it, it, it was one of those that came out of nowhere. I think I was speaking to uh, one of my friends around Halloween and asking what he was going to be watching and he gave me a list of like three movies and this was at the top of his list. So uh, Kev, if you get a chance, um, we'll stop for a moment and you uh, watch this and by the miracle of uh, radio in this case <laughs> or audio, uh, by the time we return, you will have seen it and we can get to discussing and chopping up his house. All right, sounds good. All right. Everybody stop what you're doing, uh, stop this video, go and check the movie out because we will spoil everything as if it's been out of the refrigerator for far too long. <laughs> All right, everybody, as I was saying, we are back. Uh, we, are, we saw that and we are covering his house. Uh, this movie went through, um, uh, what, what is the name of the uh, film festival? I think it was Cannes. Um, uh, no, Sundance Film Festival, actually, um, before Netflix picked up the rights. Uh, as I said before, I want to save the way that I felt in my last impression for the end, of course. So to start with you, Kev, uh, fresh off the movie, what are some of your uh, opening thoughts? Well, I did notice um, that um, they did spend some money on this film to, I, I think, to get it done well, yes. um, because it looked like just just any other, I guess, uh, movie movie that I'd seen uh, just happened to have like most of the stars were black. So I mean positive. But uh, I felt that overall um, it was um, done very well, uh, acted very well. Um, I will say I don't think I was so well, I was gonna say not surprised by that much um, in the movie except for uh, one of the main twists. Um, okay. But I think I just think everything um, was was well done. Um, and it was some really strong, like family things that I felt about it. Of course, what does family really mean when to, to spoil it, just, you know, who, who you're counting as family, um, what are you going, what and who are you going to, uh, you know, lay down your life for, who are you going to extend, um, exactly to, 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 to save. Um, who, who do you do that for? And of course they talk about, you know, the ghost that you carry with you um wherever you happen to be uh which 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 i felt was very strong um just that concept of the things that you've done you know they follow you um and in some cases it might be ptsd it might be actual ghosts uh, right but but they did explain that in the movie so i thought all of that was done very very well i thought so too um it begins, of course, with uh, after them fleeing uh, Sudan, um, coming, I believe, to Britain in which they are granted probational asylum. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what that is, it's basically, in my opinion, cruelty with a nice, pretty pink ribbon tied to it. Right. Um, you're told to live in, in a home of their choosing and even told in some cases, you can't leave. Um, you can't make any noise. You can't play games. You can't have television. You can't 
um, do some of the things that we over here take for granted. And you're supposed to be placed in this situation in hopes that um, with everything that you're fleeing from and everything in your past, over time, you will begin to create a new existence and be able to blend in and be able to become a productive citizen over time, um, just as those who have also, um, you know, sought asylum um, in the same way that you did. So they are entered into this home. And um, like I'm sure you saw, um, you've got pizza boxes that were left behind by the past tenants with uh, roaches and the whole nine crawling in them. Um, the house has holes and you know the carpet isn't as it should be. It's uh, definitely not in the best um, in the best suitings for, for someone to live for whatever you know term is needed. Uh, however, for people who have um, basically jumped in a boat and traveled across the Mediterranean Sea, um, this is in some regard, as crazy as it seems, a slice of heaven. And so then they begin to try to slowly but surely uh, blend in with the people around them and try to um, add with their own culture with uh, new things such as um, using silverware when they eat and um, trying to dress more like the people that are around them. Um, I think you might've saw uh, how uh, Bowl um, went to, I think a store or a restaurant and the people in it were chanting on, like cheering on like the footballers. Uh, and he started to kind of add in on the uh, singing and everything. And it kind of looked over at him for a second. And then since he was uh, chanting for the right team, they decided to <laughs> not give him any trouble. Um, how do you feel, I guess, um, if you were put in that situation, how difficult must it be to uh, be dropped into the middle of nowhere? And although what's behind you is, um, you know, in your rear view, what's in front of you isn't necessarily paved in gold, um, you know, to begin with. Well, I think the film did highlight uh, the difficulty of assimilation um, because Bowl seemed to be trying really hard to assimilate. I remember one of the scenes because um, they, they did that in, in, in the bar scene, but also when he um, when I think he started to try to change his clothes, he stepped into what looked like a British version of the Gap. And, right. <laughs> and, you know, he was, he was in, you know, if you had these larger than life figures wearing right. these clothes, they're definitely mm. different than what he came to the UK in. Um, right. But he's, so he's trying to assimilate. And by this time, and I think he was denying the things that he had seen in the house that his wife had accepted. And she was already by then saying, we don't belong here. Yes. And, belong. and, and e even not just, you know, the clothes that you're wearing, but that was part of it too. Um, I remember when the people came to visit them, she came, she came down, she came, she came down from downstairs, from upstairs, wearing something that looked like a bed sheet. And, right. And you know, she was eating with her hands, which she was accustomed to while her husband was eating with a knife and fork. And exactly. she prepared the meal, it was on the floor, which I guess, yeah. which I guess she was, she was used to doing it. And he yeah. was like, next time let's sit at the table. So, right. And she prepared a ways. feast, right? A feast. Right. I'm oh like, don't worry about it. You got to get down. It's like, like you ain't never got down before, brother. You got down. <laughs> you need to be grateful that you ain't had to go, you know, buy it with your exactly. you know, seven, seven pounds a month salary. Right. Um, Man, I would have had my hands dirty because right. that, that food looked good sitting on that floor. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. So, you know, di different approaches to how how well they're coming into the country, coming from mm -hmm. where they were. Um, so that was very interesting. The several ways that they showed that she was she was holding on to home and yeah, he, let's move on. But he was also denying the thing, the the reasons why we might need to look back at home again because of what they revealed about, you know, the truth about how they got there. Uh, so that was that was a very interesting uh, take on the difficulty or non-difficulty of being made to assimilate. Uh, it was it was it was a trip. What what caught me early on in the in the movie was um, Sope, or uh, I think it's Sope uh, Dirisu playing Bowl and um, Wunmi Musaku playing uh, Rial. 
for them to be fresh faces, and especially in my opinion, um, Sope, their acting was so powerful. Oh, yeah. Um, the way that he exuded um, what he was feeling and what he was going through through his eyes, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes through just the way that he would look, even before he said anything, mm -hmm. the way that um, that that Riol, you know, um, played by Wunmi uh, Musaku, the way that she seemed so maternal and 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 so um, I guess strong would be the lack of a better word, mm -hmm. but with everything that they had uh, escaped from, not, as you said before, being able to have that PTSD, um, keeping them confined in one room mm -hmm. or giving them, I think they did say something to the effect of Bowl was uh, having trouble sleeping, which you found out later. Yeah. But by and large for everything that they had gotten away from and the, um, I guess the secret that they carried with them um, they were still able to come to uh, the outskirts of London and to uh, bring with them a fresh sense of hope that I'm not sure I would have carried the same way. Mm -hmm. And what was sad and what was challenging was when they get there, not only is the, ho the home in shambles, but there also seems to be something either living within the walls or something that is that that is that has traveled over with them um, that seems to start to stir as night falls. Mm -hmm. And that first night, how did you feel? You know, spoilers for everyone who didn't catch it by now. How did you feel about that first scare um, with a uh, bull laying down right. and looking one way <laughs> and when the camera pans it almost, um, i um, trying to think of the movie that it reminded me of, but when you move past his face and saw mm -hmm. his face of uh, their daughter, mm -hmm. um, Rabbit Ears, um, mm -hmm. and the way that she looked, mm -hmm. and the fact that they didn't have to give you a jarring blare of noise or something to accompany it, right. what I thought was so original was immediately after that, there was a crow or something that had been caught up in the house, and it jumped out. And so instead of you receiving your fake scare and then the real scare, like, you know, these horror mm -hmm. movies lately try to um, package mm -hmm. um, the false before the real, they gave you the real one. Right. And then if you were, you know, if you hadn't got your feet uh, shifted properly by that, mm -hmm. immediately after that crow, boom, sweeps you off again. Right. <laughs> so um, the the, the way that they begin to pile on the horror scenes and the scary images um, was really a fresh take. Um, I have a film um, and I think that it's, it may be from Sudan, but um, it's a zombie film called The Dead. And um, you or if anyone listening uh, has a chance to check this out, it's, it's the same thing. Africa has not only, um, um, you know, thrillers and comedies and drama, but horror is really opening up uh, for that continent and with its actors and actresses. And this is a, a classic example of it. Um, as, they are, as they start to assimilate and start to uh, get more comfortable, um, they meet the guy, I think his name is Mark, who tells them about what they can and can't do. And later on, if you remember, they had to come back to him because at that point, things had gotten so crazy that <laughs> at a certain point, they felt like they didn't know if they wanted to stay at the house anymore. Mm -hmm. And so if you remember, Kevin, they went to him and um, Bowl sat down with him. It was like, um, I think that we have like rats or vermin or something mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, was there anything else around uh, that portion of the film that caught your attention? Well, I do. Uh, I did appreciate that um, the, that the jump scares weren't weren't like typical ones. Um, you yeah. Know, he, he. I mean, it, it was it was a bit of a jump, but it was less, you know, banging and then shocking you with something that's not real. Um, yes. So I did yes. appreciate like that first scare where it, it is a shock that she shows up and she and she and she croaks out. And it, it is shocking, but I did. It was there wasn't too much of that. I did like some of the imagery when it got when it got crazy later on, uh, yes. like 
when I think they were at the dinner table and his wife left the dinner table and he was still there. Then the camera backs up and the walls are dilapidated and yes. he's sitting in like a half a foot of water. And yes. I'm like, oh, okay, it's weird right, now. Right, right, and right, right. Of course, all that tied into, you know, the reason how, how they got how they got over to the UK. And, yes. And and why they got over to the UK. So why they got over to the UK. So right. I did appreciate that that weird surreal imagery. That was that was nice. That was a nice touch. And then by then, you know, as you said, things started ramping up. And because there was a thing where, you know, you turn the light on and then the ghosts go away. But right. That stopped working. And then and then the ghosts are like turn the lights on for you and they're still there. Um <laughs> on daylight and they trying to get you to cut your own throat. You know, it it it, it really did ramp up. Yes. In a real sense, which I appreciated that that did um create uh some tension and some energy. Uh because this film I think started off kind of like a slow burn, kind of. Um, yes, but, it did. It but did. Then by, but then by that point it wasn't. Um so I, I did notice. Uh, just the ramping up of the energy and the intensity, um, basically from the second half on, I guess as soon as um, Bowl started accepting and admitting that, okay, we got ghosts and there's a reason for this. What Pretty much once that happened, things just got just crazier and crazier until the very end. So I did appreciate that. Also, um, the uh, I guess you said the, char the, the character Mark, I, I did appreciate how sympathetic he was trying to be. Exactly, as, as well as, as he could, because as he well still had his, 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 his hands kind of tied his by, okay, because I'm sure it's plenty of um, people seeking asylum who come back to you and say, um, believe it or not, even though um, what I'm escaping from was as deplorable as it was, um, I need to still be treated like a human. Right. And so they still have to push a lot of those requests to the side. They still have to um, go to the root cause of why this person is in front of them asking for either more time, more money, um, a better living space, or uh, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And so he did really seem like he had their best interests in some regard. Yeah, and even at the, even at the end, when he was saying, so you still seeing them ghosts? You, right, or, <laughs> how, about the the witch? how about the rats? How about the rats? I mean, how about that witch? And he's like, well, my wife killed the witch. He said, y'all are crazy. Right, right, but, right. But then, but then when Bo went on to say that, you know, well, you know, we have ghosts because you we carry ghosts with us. We're, yes. we're home, but we carry ghosts with us. And yes. It feels like Mark was listening to him when he said that. that yeah. You know, even though all this, from his perspective, it all was kind of nuts that even though it wasn't a great house, I mean, the uh, the previous time he came, the walls were all broken up. Right. Um, and, but now that they have been patched, but he did seem to connect with a little bit when the guy was telling him that, okay, well, you know, we carry these things with us. Yeah. Um, and we're just gonna have, we're just gonna have to deal with that. He, he seemed to connect with them as, as a human, which was, which, which I appreciated. Yeah, that was a powerful statement. Yeah. And 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 in statements like that 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 step right out of the TV and into your own existence, right. um, you know how your past can haunt you, how you have to live with it, how your decisions, how your mistakes, um, follow you until you either make amends with them or at least begin to understand them. Mm -hmm. Until that point, you will not be able to pass them. You will forever be and imprisoned by them almost like they were with that home. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't long before uh, Riel began to tell uh, Ball the, the, the story of the Apeth, as you mentioned before, um, the Night Witch. Mm -hmm. um, it was a story from Sudan about a poor man in her village who accidentally stole from the Apeth down by the river. Uh, when the thief built his home, the Apeth moved in with him and haunted him. Um, Riel believed that the APEF had followed them, and if they didn't repay their debt, the APEF would bring um, Niagak, uh, who was their daughter, back to them. So um, over time, Riel began to experience how the house was um, coming to life in sorts. Mm -hmm. um, I like the way that at first Ball um, handled, I, I like the way the director handled how Ball was beginning to see his house crumble around him mm -hmm. with the wallpaper crumbling down in the way that it did. Mm -hmm. And with him punching so many holes in the wall from seeing his daughter, uh, so-called, 
showing up in different parts and different um, places in the walls, um, sticking her hands through, following him around and everything. But it, I, it was really powerful of Rial's character to say something to the effect in the movie, um, with everything that I've lived and experienced, why would I be afraid of ghosts? Right. I've seen so much going on in the past. Ghosts are like a sunny day. <laughs> um, you don't see that in a movie often about ghosts where people are like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, right. Even, right. In, even in movies where people have accepted the existence of ghosts, Yes. She seemed not to be bothered like at all. And you don't, you don't, you don't see that because I'm thinking of movies like um, The Sixth Sense. Right. Or, or um, the other one, A Stir of Echoes. Oh, definitely. Where where one of the main characters, yeah, one of the main, well, one of the main characters Uh accepts, okay, we got ghosts here. Right. But they're also freaking out. Yes. Um, uh, Rial was not freaking out. She was like, "Okay, well, this is this is how it is, and we got to get out of here." Nah, she was she, she was yeah. really strong. Yeah, she, 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 she was really strong. Um, even yes. though the truth, the truth of all this, this well, I mean, the truth of why they got there, I, it, it's almost like it was revealed to her. I think she knew when it when they got over it happened, but I mean, she had bought into the same fiction that you know we had this daughter. Yeah, um, yeah, and if you will, um, let them let. Uh, not let them know, but let's expound on what the, um, we say twist, but I, I like to put it as more of a, a revelation right. um, because in this type of, of, of scenario, um, looking back on the story after you found it out didn't put a twist on everything you saw before it. Right. It was just an understanding of why they were going through what they had created for themselves right so um if you will lay out what this twist slash revelation actually was about the door so the reason uh part of the reason why when they were um i guess in the process of coming over Mm -hmm. um there was a bus that they were that they and many other people were trying to get on the bus was full and uh the person on the bus was saying there's no more room for anyone else to get on this bus children only Right. Um, and so Bolin Real and like dozens of other people mm-hmm. couldn't couldn't get on. But because of, because the person had mentioned children only, he grabbed some random girl and said, this is my daughter. Um, right. So let us on. And, and they person, did. And they did. And they got fooled. And then so that was the bus to, to I guess, the port where they're going. And then um, as they were crossing the water uh, from from boat from somewhere else, I guess it was a storm and a lot of people got knocked out. And he and his daughter, quote unquote daughter, and mm-hmm. his wife got knocked got knocked over. Um, yeah. But he went back to save his wife, um, and and the girl drowned. Um, but by the time they got to the UK, the fiction that they both had bought into was that it was their daughter, because again, that was the fiction that got they got them on the boat in the first place. That right. Uh, but that's what, and I, I appreciate what you said about that. This is more like a revelation than a twist, because the fact that um, there's blood on it on his hands, and ba- based in deceit, that he had lied about having a daughter, and that's right. what brought him over in the first place. Even though right. it was arguably a better life for him and his wife, the yeah. fact that he had stolen he had stolen someone's daughter from them, right? Uh, that that was the that was the initial error that was the sin that ended up staying with him and and it's the reason why he was haunted ever since yeah he he and his wife and the house they ended up in and that's what that's what connected with the story of the night witch it it taught it talked about it talked about theft and that was and that was a theft he stole someone's daughter from them to make Mm. a better life for himself and his wife Um, right that's why all this stuff happened in the um in in the uk why the house was falling apart that's why we see all those ghosts um so yeah so that so so it so yeah it's it is more of a a revelation that, yeah um who who he was saying wasn't really his daughter because he pretended it was and that's why she ends up showing up because her, her blood her blood is on his hands exactly. and of course again the, the trickery involving her and that's why i appreciated. Uh, when it was over, 
that mm-hmm. you know you still see her because that's because it was the reminder that they both they both eventually accepted that okay we're, we're gonna stay here yes we accept that you know um the Agak and the others who perished this is a this is part of our cross to bear this yeah and so they both ended up accepting um, yeah their part in all this um so even though it was not a happy ending i believe they both ended up with some closure yes so that was that and that was that was um yeah, it was interesting. I feel it wasn't a happy ending. Right. More like a good ending in that yeah. they accepted they accepted their faults. Yes. And were and and were free to move on, even though there, of course, was the constant reminders that they're still seeing the ghosts like all the day on time. Right. Yeah, because think about how a Hollywood ending would have had it. Yeah. Um Niagin would have been somehow so she didn't brought back to life. Right. Either that or she would somehow um, fade away yeah. in some sort of uh, like 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 smoldering ashes. Right. And now she's been returned to her mother, um, who was also killed in the in the gunfire right. as uh, she was stolen. And now they can live their lives in their home and not have to deal with right. what they what 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 they experienced and what wrong they brought on just because they faced terms with it. Right. It's like, no, you gonna stay with this. Right. She's living with y'all, just like when we make mistakes in life, just like when we, you know, cause when we create sin in life, um, and when we have our own cross to bear. It doesn't just go away once you say, "Oh, I realized what I did. I apologize. Now I'm a better person." Right. You may learn from it. It might make you better, but it doesn't mean that what you affected. And in this case, a little girl who was drowned because she didn't have any business being abducted in the first place, right. um, you know, now now suddenly is able to just drift away and, 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 and be forgotten about. Right. And so it was a powerful scene as well when Bowl finally came face to face with the APEF. Mm-hmm. And 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 um, this is when he's gotten to the point where Rial is like getting ready to leave him. She's like trying to get out of the house and um, she's, she doesn't want anything else to do with him. And the APEF has been whispering to her at times when she's alone, I will take a pound of flesh for a pound of flesh. I'll bring Niagin back to life if you kill Ball. That way you give me him and I'll return you the girl. Right. Um, so Rial has gotten tired of being of being around him. He's slowly coming, you know, uh, loose at the seams. Um, he's not bathing. He's wearing the same clothes, um, and he's slowly starting to lose it, which anyone would. Right. But but he decides in a fit of rage to break the locks on the windows and the doors, thus uh, keeping her trapped in, so that they can so called face what's going on. Then he takes a candle, lights it, sits in a room by himself, closes his eyes and falls asleep. And when he's awakened, he's awakened by the night witch. And it starts with the witch being across from him in the darkness. And you see in the pair of glowing eyes. And um, the uh, um, a bowl said to the, the witch, he said, I know who you are. Um, you are the beast. And the APEF in turn said, you are the beast and I am the butcher. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I said, oh my gosh. (laughs) You talking about something. It was like, (laughs) it it was poetry, but it was also, you know, the chickens coming to roost, you know? And so now I'm sitting back because this whole movie has led us to this, this showdown. And although you had to wait until the end of the movie to to get it, you had the ghost of the people who had also drowned and the people who had been massacred all popping up in the house at different times to um, kind of pepper the story with enough horror. Mm-hmm. And one question that I asked myself was, was this the type of horror film that if I turned all the lights off and watched it by myself, that I would be honestly afraid? Mm-hmm. And my answer to that is, yes, I would be. There were a lot of things that were creepy. I liked the way that the makeup was was handled. I liked the way that the the scares and the 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 the, the looming dread hung over everything mm-hmm. uh, to the point that it was almost bathed in it. Mm-hmm. 
But when it came time that the APEF was finally on screen, how did you feel about not only how it looked, but how it was handled and then how it was dealt its final blow? Um, I don't know what I was looking for. Okay. But the APEF didn't scare me that much un until it started attacking Bold. Yeah, it was because, weird, you know? Yeah, because because Bold did, they both, Bold and Real did accept that, okay, something's coming for him, we're going to let it happen. But right. Then, but then when the thing, he, he cut his flesh, then when the thing finally got up on him, like Bold started having second thoughts, or at least, <laughs> or at least, or at least, or at least he was scared, which yes. is scary. And it yes. was scary. So I was yes, like, oh. it was. So the, I did feel a sense of terror from him that right. even though he accepted his culpability and all this, he was going to do whatever he needed to do. Yeah, he tried to commit suicide, to commit you know? Suicide, but then it right. was very frightening to have this beast sitting up on you, digging its hands into your into, into, into the your flesh. Into the wound into that the you wound. had made. So that, that was a scary moment. I, I definitely felt whatever he was feeling. Um, right at, at the at the time, um, I didn't know what was going to go down from then on because I also thought, like like the APS had said, you know, kill yourself, I give you the girl. Um, yeah. Um. So that was a surprise when Rial was like, you know what, no. And right. And, and, and I was like, when she took matters into her own hands and killed the beast, and so I and so I so I didn't know what was going to happen then, but then yes, that's when there was that. That's when everything came out. That well, okay, you killed you killed the beast. You and your husband get to live. You get to stay in the house. Right. Um, little girl is still right there. Go look 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 over there. There she is. You gonna keep seeing her. Okay. So that was like, <laughs> so, so that made sense to me. So uh, that's that's how I feel about all that. How that went down. It was it did have its. I did. I feel it did have its moments. Um. The certainly was yeah. He was he definitely got scared. Uh, at the end uh, and it's it was scary it was it was appropriate so i felt that was done really well i think so too um uh the fact of her um as you said before having to either have the chance of of watching the night witch kill him and then i would imagine not only giving her the girl back but also letting her kind of more or less go right because the whole time the night which is begging her to, you know, if you give me him, I'll give you her. It's not I'll give you her and I'll kill you too. It's right. it's it's imagine I would imagine, you know, I would think that she would be left to live as well. Right. So she turned on the fact of having the the so-called daughter back, which once again I say, and and here's a funny thing too, there were several times that although Rial knew that that wasn't her child, the way that she would speak about her was almost like she was allowing herself to believe the lie. Right. And I think that that is a maternal thing that I would imagine only mothers know about, even though you have abducted this child and taken her with you into this journey that you may not know if you'll come back to or not, the way that she was holding her and protecting her on the ship Right. just in that little bit of time, yep. connected them in some weird way. Yep. And so when she found the daughter's um, little doll and was able to rip the bottom of it off and make a necklace from it, once again, even though in death, you know, she's still feeling like she's somehow connected to her. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, 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 I liked how Rial said, or by her actions, I'll still give up the child, I'll still give up this sense of freedom and escaping what's going on at the home. Mm -hmm. I want my, I want my man back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want my husband. I, I want to face what we did. I want to overcome it. And 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 that showed something that made the the small points in the beginning of the movie when they were together mm -hmm. and when they seemed like they were genuinely in love. Yeah. That made those points um, present in the end of the picture as well as the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciated that she took had to take that knife in her hand and 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 stand behind the apeth and slit his throat. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as we said, Mark and the other people came back because you know they had so many complaints from Bowl about the house that it was time let's just go and see what's going on for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when they get there and see holes tore up through everything, right. <laughs> as you said, he's like, "All right, what's going on with the rats? No, yeah. oh, you know the rats. I was just um, you know, I was I just making the." I was making it a bit bigger than it was. Right. Okay, what about this witch? Is that still there? <laughs> and then what he said about that, which again, say it how he said it again. 
he said, uh, you know, we, we carry ghosts with us. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That was, that was, it was, it was, it was really spot on. Um, not only with the messaging, um, and it didn't have to be, as we've been saying before, one of those social black horror movies. You did something completely different. And it stands alone in the horror aspects and it stands alone in the drama and it stands alone in the messaging that ties it all together. Yeah, well, so, they, they did cover, um, they did do a, a short primer on you know the whole South Sudan thing. Which, yes. which which was good. They yes. they gave pretty much all that you needed to know about that as backstory. Mm. Um, even even in the middle when Rial went to the doctor and the doctor was like, "Oh, your tattoos are pretty." Yes. <laughs> and, then, and then she and she left her the realization. I mean, she she dropped she dropped the real on her when she said, mm -hmm. "Okay, this was done to me when I was a child, and then I did yeah. this other thing just so I could survive because right. people are killing each other." I mean, exactly. They 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 covered that whole thing. Yes, it was um, like because, one one of one of the Sudanese gangs yeah. um, marked their bodies with scars to show that you were with that gang. Right. The other side, I mean, the other gang that they were warring with marked their body with scars to show that you were on that side. Right. Well, uh, Rial had marked herself with both. Just because she had to do what she had to do to Stay blend alive. in and to survive, exactly. Um, so so yeah, that's yeah. probably if someone were to call this a social thriller, they would probably bring attention to that. Um, yeah, because of those issues. But I yeah. But I I like how that was brought in. Yes, um, because it I think it was definitely a necessary backstory, and I mean they they portrayed some of it. In yes, the beginning. Um, I do like that they they took some time to just explain you know what's what this is about because it's it's definitely necessary context. Um, so that, that that was handled well too. Yes, yes. And the last thing that we didn't hit on, but just um, really quickly, um, the fact of Rial escaping from the house finally back when he was trying to lock her in and while he was uh, going berserk, meaning bold. And she goes over to this building that seems to be adjacent to where they're living. And one of her friends or family members from the past calls her over and they embrace and that friend brings her into the building where all the rest of the family and everything, all of the women, for whatever reason, are inside and are happy to see her, but they, there's something that seems surreal about it all. And so she sits down with them and, and, and Rial says, as she looks around, I know what this is, this isn't real. Then she says, but where is my daughter? And one of two of the family members looks at her and walks over and touches her stomach and they say, uh, you didn't have a daughter. And so everything happens just as it does, as we stated before. But around the time that she has to make the decision to do away with the APEF or to just leave Ball and everything else behind, she comes back to that place in her mind. And she tells the family members, I love you all, basically, but I can't be with you right now. I have something to do back here. Mm -hmm. And so what you find out is, that was actually the building where almost everything started, where a large massacre took place. Mm -hmm. And she escaped by hiding in this little, um, almost like a little desk. And so um, in the past, Ball came and was calling to her through building to building and finally found her and pulled her out as behind laid the bodies of all of her you know, family members. Mm -hmm. And so that's how they begin the escapade of heading towards, you know, seeing people being killed as they're luckily um, getting away with, with their lives. And then they finally come up to the bus where, um, you know, everyone's standing and where they decide to abduct the child at the last minute. Mm -hmm. So um, it was it was really good. Um, I thought about how they made a point to say that that home is where that home is where they belong. Mm -hmm. It was almost like they would die if they had to, to say, we're not moving, we're not leaving, we're not being scared out of here. This is where we're standing. And, and just real quick before we go into our, um, you know, closing measures, how did you feel about that lasting scene of the two sides of the home where one family was Bull and, um, and, and his wife and some of the 
people that they were with behind them. And then on the other side was uh, the daughter and a couple of, and some people across there too. And they're just kind of looking at each other. Right. It's almost like, it was almost like it was a stalemate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, by then they had all, they had accepted their culpability and what had happened. They had accepted yeah. that the price of living in this house is going to be, well, this is, this is the eternal reminder yes. of, of what's happened. You are never going to get away from this part of your past. Yes. Um, no matter how much you assimilate, um, no, no, how, no, no matter how much you, you blend in, you fit in, well, you brought this with you. You're, you're taking us, we're coming with you. Mm -hmm. and that's just that's just how it is so yeah you're home in your new home but mm -hmm. there's also your old home that's with you too yes per powerfully stated very well said i feel that um the story seemed a bit small um as of course it was dealing with mainly the the, the you know lead actor and actress um, and confined to the one home, but still, in, uh, you know, still went through everything that they had managed to live beyond and to survive. Um, the acting, I thought, was superb from these two. And once again, I'm looking to see whatever they might um, have their careers lead them into next. Um, totally, totally top of the line acting there. Um, the directing was very good. Once again, this was, um, I think his name is Remy uh, Weeks' uh, directorial debut. Um, rewatchability, I think that it was rewatchable. I think that it, I, I think that it was rewatchable. It had its creepy moments and it had its scares and, and I like anything with, um, with, with um, stories of um, surviving insurmountable odds. Mm -hmm. um, it was an original idea. And if I had a special ingredient, it would be a blend of either that African tale and the, the mix of the fresh faces. There were no A-listers as you would think. And still everything came off as believable um, as I'm sure the director and, and each, each acting participant uh, wished it to be. Mm -hmm. I feel um, that I would give this a strong, we liked it. Mm -hmm. Or in other words, um, I'd say a four out of five. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about um, his house as, <laughs> as it fits into our, our we saw that um, uh, list of, you know. I feel the same score. way as you did with all of your categories. Um, I like the plot. Uh, uh -huh. I like the script. I uh, like the acting. Um, mm -hmm. I think it all came together very well. I would, I would definitely watch it again. Um, I agree with you that I feel the plot did seem kind of small. Mm -hmm. I don't think that was a bad thing, but it did seem very contained, which was good. It was about this family. It was about them two, and it was about their journey. Um, right. Even though I think the things that kind of went on uh, are very large. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, how, you know, tying into the whole South Sudan conflict and all of that. And, and, you know, and, you know, refugees and how well they're treated or not when they come from one place to another place. Some very large ideas are in it, yes. but it just seemed it seemed very local to them, which I thought was a good thing. Um, so my rating uh, would be um, we, we liked it. I, I liked it a lot. Ah. Uh, it was, um, like I said, I, it, they definitely took the time and I think the effort to make sure that everything they did was done well. Even the scary elements, the straightforward elements, the surreal elements, um, I think all of that worked great. And of course, I agree the acting uh, was top notch, top notch and very, and also very nuanced. Um, so yeah, that's why my final rating is that I liked, I liked it a lot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to things that you are dealing with, things that you have experienced and things that you wish to overcome, uh, you have to remember that there is a chance for two measures to unfold. The first is taking ownership of whatever that thing may have been. And the second thing is accepting it for what it was, being able to uh, step over it, um, not forget it because it will not forget you, but to find a way to grow, to continue to live and to um, 
be who you are and to hopefully be a better person um, in the process. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that sounds like a we saw that for both of us. What did you feel about his house? Please let us know in the comments. And uh, if you enjoyed what you heard, hit that little thumb. Um, give us a, a subscription if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? And uh, as always, I am Javon. Kevin. And we, we saw, saw that. that. <laughs> See you guys next time.